For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Annual Ladies Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Friday evening, February the 20th, 2015. Carla Butard is the speaker of the service teaching on Break Up Your Fallow Ground. Well, it is um, an honor to be here. And it's a blessing for all of you to be here. And it really is true that this is your time. God has seen to you that you are here and he has something special for you. God just pray that you can be a receiver a receiver of what God has for you. Whatever it is, sometimes it comes in a way that we don't like, but still receive it because God knows what's best for us. And um, I want to start tonight um, by opening in prayer, just do some uh, a little bit of warfare before we get started with the conference. So if you'll just agree with me as we pray, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, First of all, I thank you for giving us power over all the power of the enemy, that nothing by any means should hurt us. So we exercise that power right now, and we find every spirit from the kingdom of darkness that has an assignment against this meeting, against each individual, and corporately against the body of Christ. We bind them now in the name of Jesus. I send out the warring angels to scramble every plan and assignment. I break every word spoken curse that's being spoken against anyone who is in this room, anyone listening over the internet, to uh, every saint. I break those word spoken curses, even the self-inflicted word spoken curses that we've inadvertently and purposely sometimes spoken of ourselves. I break them now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every working of witchcraft. I bind the strong man assigned to Lake Hamilton Bible Camp by the enemy. I bind him now in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command him to go in Jesus' name. I bind the strong man assigned to every one of us that is in this room by the enemy. I bind him and break his power and command him to go now. I render him powerless in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind every spirit that would hinder the hearing of the Word of God. I bind every Antichrist spirit. I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind every religious spirit. I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I I call on the mighty warring angels to do warfare in the heavenlies right now over this campground in the entire time that this meeting has taken place so that we can have an open heaven to receive from you everything that you have for us. Lord, I cover each one of us with the blood of Jesus. And uh, for our protection, Lord, as we go through deliverance, that we will um, be protected by you, that there will be no uh, harm, that the enemy, the, the demons cannot hurt us in Jesus' name. And we thank you for everyone who is here. We thank you for the speakers that you have chosen for this hour. We ask you to bless each one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I was thinking about what God would want us to do, and I had a scripture that came to me from Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. That's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to break up some fallow ground. And sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskins of your heart. Right now, Father, I just, uh, I ask you to come and circumcise our hearts to receive. Even break down the walls of protection that we have put up around ourselves to keep us from receiving, even from you. So we're going to break up some fallow ground. Now, 
There were a lot of hands raised when we asked who was here for the first time. Lots of hands. How many of you who are here for the first time, is this the first time for you to sit in a, a meeting of the Ministry of Casting Out Demons? Okay, just a few. Okay, but anyway, um, there are some, I call, Genesis curses that we're all born with. You know, when we come here, we're not a clean little package waiting to be developed. We come uh, laden down with what I call grave clothes. When Lazarus came out of the grave, he was he died, he was dead. And that's how we all start out. We are spiritually dead. We were born, but we're spiritually dead. We have a physical body that is alive, but our spirits have not been born again yet. We have the spirit of man at that time. And so when we get born again... As Lazarus, when he was dead in the grave, and he was resurrected, he came out of that grave, and Jesus, it says, that he was bound with grave clothes. And many times we get born again, we get saved, and we enter into that spirit life, the spiritual life in Christ Jesus, but we're bound with grave clothes, things that we were born with, that we had nothing to do with those spirits being in us, they are generationally inherited. They have been in our bloodline for years and years and years. And so we're going to take care of some of those red clothes tonight. And we're going to take care of some generationally inherited diseases. So if you came here with an infirmity, let the blood of Jesus Christ remove it from you. Uh, many times there are spirits attached to, to uh, illnesses, and so as we cast out some of these generationally inherited spirits and curses, who knows, they may take the infirmity with it. So that would be great. Many times when Jesus walked the earth and he healed people, um, there was a, a, an evil spirit attached to that illness. And uh, I have a, um, a Bible study that is, consisted of women from like four or five different faiths, and when they invited me to come, I was like, oh, goodness, how, Lord, how am I going to minister to all of these women when they come from such different directions? You know, they all come from, there were Methodists, there were Baptists, there were Catholics, there were full gospel. They all have different doctrines and beliefs, and how is this going to work? But I'm asking you to show me how to do it. But what they really wanted to learn about was healing. And so, um, God began to drop healing instances from the Bible, and I would look them up, and I was making my notes, and it was really just like one page of scriptures that that was going to be that session's teaching. It took me a year to get through that teaching, <laughs> because every time I would read a scripture about Jesus healing somebody, and he would say to that foul, deaf, and dumb spirit, get out. I thought, Lord, you are so awesome. <laughs> because my heart now is to get those demons out. I am not satisfied anymore to sit and just, you know, study where Paul went and what Paul did. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I I'm want to cast out demons. So it, it was an introduction to them because they were like, I've never seen that before. And I had never realized it before myself how many infirmities have a demon attached to them. So as we take care of some of these spirits, and it's not rocket science. Rocket science, I'm telling you, if I'm in it, it's simple. <laughs> and, um, and it really is a life-changing thing. It will change your life. It, it's amazing to sit in these meetings and if, when the prayers are being given, and things are leaving you, and you don't even know they're leaving you. Sometimes you know they're leaving you, but sometimes you go home and uh, suppose you somebody dealt with anger, and they're casting out the spirit of anger, and then you go home and something happens, and you're like, whoa, I didn't even react to that the way I used to. That's how deliverance works. It's powerful, and it's very real, and it's life-changing. <laughs> so if you will turn in Genesis, we're going to... Deal with some of these Genesis curses. And we're going to go to Genesis chapter 3. Okay, y'all say Genesis chapter 3, but I'm going to read Genesis chapter 2. 
um, a few scriptures from there. In verse 15 it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt, shalt surely die. Now that word die, in the strong concordance, it means worthy of death. It means to stop living. It means to subside gradually. Now we know that when um, when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they didn't drop dead. They didn't drop dead. But that is when death entered into mankind. If they had never eaten from that tree, they would still be alive today. And all of us who would come from Adam and Eve would, would live forever in the Garden of Eden. That was God's original plan. But we know they did. I think it's really sad that in the third chapter of Genesis, there's a lot of chapters in the Bible, but in the third one, it all went down the tube. <laughs> so we don't know how it would have been if they had stayed in the garden. But listen, if you belong to Jesus Christ now, you have the opportunity to step back into that garden with all of the benefits that he meant for us to have. That's the exciting thing. So here is when, when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, death came into man. Sin and death by sin. So there were two things that happened, sin and death. Okay? Uh, and that, uh, the part that says to subside gradually, it's a slow, gradual diminishing of. What does that remind you of? When I read that, I thought, wow, that kind of sounds like aging. <laughs> you know, that, that death came in and there was a slow, gradual diminishing of. So in learning that, I'm thinking, okay, now wait a minute. If I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, death has been abolished. But see, I didn't learn that until I was about 40. See, so I believe that if we know about this, to step into that life, that resurrection life force working in your body, um, we would all remain younger without the slow, gradual diminishing of death because we would abolish death. Jesus Christ has abolished death. So we're going to deal with that tonight. We're going to stop that aging process of growing old. You know, you can be old. You can be of great age and not be old. I have an aunt that's 92 years old and her body is breaking down, but she's got a young spirit. She is teaching a Bible class in her assisted living building. <laughs> and I mean, she is one happening lady. She has so much life in her. And that's what happens whenever we uh, get rid of that curse of death. It's, it's what causes your teeth to decay. It's what causes your bones to decay. So I realized, well, wow, Lord, when I got saved, the sin issue was dealt with, but nobody dealt with the death issue. So we're going to deal with the death issue. And that's going to make a difference in your life. So we know that they did not drop dead. Okay, now we go to chapter 3. And it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Let me ask you a question. I'm sorry. I'm just, all these little things are hopping. But you know, when God created the heaven and the earth, it was good. It was perfect. This, you can read about this in Revelation chapter 12 on your own if you want to. But there was a war in heaven between Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels. And Satan and his angels lost. Lucifer was his name at that time. He was an archangel. Okay? So, because he wanted to be like God or be above God, he was cast out of heaven, and it says he was cast into the earth. Now, this was before uh, the garden was there. And so, here is Satan and his angels cast down to the earth, and it's a great big dirt ball. You know, the earth is a pretty big ball. And in all the places he could have been, he shows up in the Garden of Eden. 
And there's something to be known about that. Wherever God is doing the work, that's where he wants to be. That's where he wants to be. That's why I go to great lengths to bind him and to keep him from coming to the meeting. Because he's not welcome here. I don't want him here. And if he does, he, he assigns people to come and, you know, to cause problems, to be a distraction for all kinds of things. And so that's why I make it my business to start there, binding him, putting him at bay, all of his demons, the tormenting spirits, everything that would come to hinder. I want to take care of that first. That's called warfare. Prayer is not warfare. Warfare is different than prayer. Prayer is addressing God. Warfare is addressing the enemy. And we need to do both. Because if you're not doing warfare, he's messing with your prayer season. You know why there's so much problems whenever you decide to go someplace? Because you have sat down and you've said your prayer to the Lord. Lord, I'm taking this trip today. I pray for a safe trip. And we're talking to, we're talking to God about our trip and everything. And the, the demons that have been assigned to you, because let me tell you, if you belong to Jesus Christ, Satan hates you. It's his job to take you out. That's what he wants to do. So he's, he's assigned people to be around you all the time to listen to your prayer. Then they were to say, oh, hey, she's going to, she's going here and she's going here. Okay, give her a flag. Okay, uh, make her car break down. Hey, give her a headache. Cause her kid to get sick. I mean, you know, all these things that we call opposition. Hey, start taking care of them. Uh, my life has become a lot easier since I've been doing that. I've seen a big, big difference. Now, the opposition is still there because, you know, it's very crafty. He knows how to get in there and cause you trouble. Just like yesterday, um, I had been up late the night before because I was doing a Mega Man radio from 10 to 12. Anyway, it was, it was uh, convenient for me to do them back to back. So he had a, an 8 to 10, and then the next night he had a 10 to 12. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, so I didn't get to bed until about 1.30 or 2. So Friday morning or Thursday morning, I slept late. And then I was going to get my stuff together and come up here. I mean, when I sat up in the bed, the phone rang. There was the first one. I hung up from that. The second one came. While I'm on the phone with that one, the third one came. And I mean, it was just a barrage of stuff. So I was almost frustrated and thought, ah, I know what this is. So immediately, I started taking care of it in warfare. And so... You know, his job is to pull you away from what you need to be focused on. If he can rattle your cage, he'll do it. So, I've, I've learned to, um, and boy, I think it rattled easy. <laughs> when I was younger, oh gosh. Thank goodness for deliverance. Okay. So, in all the places the devil could be, he shows up in the Garden of Eden. Now we'll go to the second sentence in verse 1. <laughs> Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now I could stop there with another little sermonette of what we hear preached about women. You know, she added that. God didn't tell Adam not to touch it. He just told them not to eat it. So the woman always gets blamed for adding on. But see, God didn't tell that to Eve. Adam told Eve. Adam probably was afraid that Eve might touch it, so he added, don't even touch it. (laughs) Okay, verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Now what is that? A lie? That's a lie. So see, the lying spirit came in in the garden. It entered mankind, the lying spirit. And then, it's in verse 5, it says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. See, now, uh, Satan is wanting Eve to think that God is holding out on her. 
Well, why would he not want me to, you know, be like him? See, there was a spirit of offense there. If the devil can get you offended, the spirit of offense is a is a such a damaging thing. It will keep people uh, their relationships being divided. It will keep them even from God, which is this what happened to Eve. She was offended. Satan deceived her to make her think that God told her that, not because he loved her, not because he knew what was best for her, but so she couldn't know something that he knows. That's what Satan wanted to do. He planted that doubt in her mind. In verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the eye, and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. You notice there's no dialogue from Adam in those scriptures. Nowhere does it say, and Adam spoke up and said, Eve! No, you don't hear anything like that. So, Satan caused her to have lust of the eye. Lust of the flesh, it looked, it looked good. It looked yummy. Why couldn't we eat this? And then the pride of life is when we just do our own thing. And that's what she did. So here we have the lying spirit. We have deception because he deceived her. He caused her to believe the lie. That's what deception is. When you believe a lie, you're deceived. He contradicted God's word. And you know, that's a biggie. We need to be really careful in meetings that we go to, in churches that we attend, that when we hear something that contradicts God's word, we better pay attention to that. <laughs> then there was the spirit of offense. And we're going to deal with that spirit of offense. I hate that spirit of offense. I used to be easily offended, and I used to easily offend other people. We're gonna, I think we're going to hear about that spirit. Not for me, but it'll be spoken of. Okay. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. See, something happened. When they sinned, something happened, and they were aware of it. They felt it. Something left. And it was the glory of God. They were clothed. They didn't know they were naked. But when they sinned and disobeyed God and rebelled against God, that was that left. And suddenly they felt naked. I know exactly that feeling. If you want to hear about it, it's on lhbconline.com, the commercial. I can't help it. You know, because I don't have time to stop and tell you that whole thing. But if you want to hear about that, being naked, it's in a teaching that I did called um, Spiritual Blackmail. Spiritual Blackmail. Because when your thing is found, when, when you are exposed, when God puts his finger on your thing, it's like all your clothes fall off and you are stark naked under a spotlight. I had that happen to me. It's not good. <laughs> but, but it was a, a horrible, wonderful thing because I got delivered right after all my clothes fell off. <laughs> okay. And so, so what did they do? They knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now see, this is what we do when we sin. We try to cover it. Many of us are walking around with spiritual fig leaves. We don't want that thing to be known and so we cover it. And I can't imagine, I had a fig tree. I can't imagine leaves against naked skin. Those fig leaves, they are scratchy and itchy. They're awful. They should have picked something smooth. <laughs> so they're trying to cover their shame, really. They're trying to cover their sin. Guilt came in. That's what, it, that's what it's called, guilt. And you know what? Uh, for many years in my life, 
I had that guilt. It was born into me. Not guilty, but felt guilty. That's a cruel demon. I call it false guilt. The the instance that I that sticks out in my mind, but there were many, was when I was in junior high school, somebody had written on the bathroom wall. So they don't know who did it, so they bring everybody in. You're sitting on the floor. And the teacher is just tearing everybody up for writing on the bathroom wall. Well, I've never written on the bathroom wall in my life. And I felt so guilty. Like I did it. And I know if they were looking for a guilty face, be careful when you go by the If they were looking for a guilty face, I can hear them in the teacher's lounge. Yeah, it was that Carla. She did it. I could tell it was all over her face. But I didn't do it. But if somebody is doing this, it's like me. Is it me? Did I do it? <laughs> and that's a false guilt. And it came in in the garden. It entered mankind in the garden. And shame. They felt shame. You know how I knew that? Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. See, they were hiding because they knew they were guilty. They had sinned. They felt the shame. And now, when they used to be with God in the garden, and it was a good thing, they're hiding from Him. It's just like, you know, if you have children, <laughs> you see that. <laughs> they do something and they're hiding. Verse 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that I was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Duh, he knew. Wherefore I commanded thee that thou should not eat. And the man said, The woman. <laughs> the woman whom thou gavest to me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So Adam blames Eve. Now let me tell you what came into all women at that time. Adam, anger. What? How dare you blame me? You were standing there right with me. You know, you can just hear that conversation. Or perhaps, perhaps he said it this way, the woman you gave me. See, there's blaming God, too. How many of us have done things wrong and we want to say, God, why did you let that happen? No, why did you do it? That's the question. So I call that Adam anger. So what was born into every woman is an innate anger at men. Because we hold all men responsible for what Adam did. Okay. And then there's also Eve anger. Because she's saying, what? Or he's mad at her. So there's Eve anger in all men. They want to blame the woman. So in marriage, when I counsel with married people... Um, I, I take them through a little thing. I tell the to the wife, I said, okay, we need to, uh, because y'all are married, I want to do something. It's going to sound ridiculous, but there's really something to it. I make them face each other. The first time I did this, it was in a mixed crowd, and there was a couple sitting over here. And I said, okay, husband or wife, I want you to look at your husband. So all of them were doing this. And say, honey, I ask you to forgive me for blaming you and holding you responsible for what Adam did. She looked at him. They were, it wasn't happening, I'm telling you. <laughs> she had a lot of anger. But it, it was, uh, and when I saw her, I thought, or you can wait till you get home and do this. <laughs> Pray about it. <laughs> but um, I didn't quite know what was going to happen there. And then I had the man say, honey, please forgive me for blaming for holding you responsible for what Eve did. And, of course, the response is, I forgive you. Huge break in something in the spirit when you do that. Now there's unity when that thing is gone. It's real. And you know where you can see it? It starts at a very early age. It causes competition between the husband and the wife. There's a power struggle now. You know, who's going to make the decisions? And it's, you can see it in kindergarten. 
the book of, I'm better than you are. And the book says, no, you're not, I'm better than you are. And there's a competition from a very early age between little boys and little girls. And sometimes we perpetuate that. We add fuel to it. Not meaning to. Okay, so then, in 14 it says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. See, so now the curses are being pronounced by God. He curses the serpent. We don't we don't know what he looked like before, but if he's going to be cursed to be on his belly all of his days, he must not have been a belly, you know, a belly creature at that time. But now he is. He's going to be on his belly all the days of his life. And then he put enmity between thee and the woman. That's why we hate snakes. We hate snakes. And between thy seed and her seed. Now, it says between thee and the woman, the woman is actually the church. So there is enmity between Satan and the church. And between his seed and her seed. See, so because he didn't know who the woman was, he hates every woman. And he doesn't know the seed. See, he, would, he knew that the seed would come from the woman, so he hates all the seed of women. He wants your kids. Then he says, Unto the woman, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Uh, I, I have wondered since then, this is the curse that he put on the woman. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Well, it made me wonder, I wonder if we were just supposed to have a set amount of children. But because of sin, it's multiplied conception. I always, I mean, I had three babies in three years, okay? And it was a nightmare. But I always thought, why, Lord, would you create us to have an egg every month that we could get pregnant from? You know? Well, I think that was part of the curse on the woman. Uh, now, that's not written in stone. That's not a doctrine, okay? It's just a thought. Um, I went to the psychiatrist when I was in my thirties, and he looked at me and he said, you think too much. <laughs> and I said, Okay. It says, Thy desire shall be to thy husband. Well, that's a good thing. How can that be a curse? But you know what I learned later? What that really means? Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. We, I know this is true because it was true with me. I wanted his place. I wanted his place. Why should he get to be the one that's the head? Why should he get to make this? You know, why should he, you know, that was in the days that I was not well. Those were on the days on my way to being delivered. But, you know, I had a lot of, um, a lot of resentment. I resented being born a woman. That was sad. Boy, but whenever I learned the privileged place of a woman. I love being a woman. And my husband loves that I love being a woman. Because <laughs> I quit trying to take his place. The struggle was over. That's a good thing. And he shall rule over thee. It was never meant for man to rule over woman. In the beginning it was not that way. That's part of the curse. We are supposed to be in unity. We are one. And see, when you, when you come into these things the way God had them set up, it's beautiful. The relationship between a husband and a wife is the most powerful relationship in the world. When you find a husband and a wife in unity, 
powerful. I love to see men and women in the deliverance ministry or just, you know, for years and years and years, um, I would come to meetings just like y'all are here, except it would be a mixed meeting. And all these husbands and wives would be together and I would just be grieved because I wanted my husband to be with me so badly. Well, he's with me. Now he's with me, even though he's not sitting in the chair with me. He's with me. You know, we're on the same page spiritually now, and that's a beautiful thing. And he prays for me. I know he's praying for me. He's covering me. Um, I have him pray for me before I leave. I call him on the phone and say, okay, I'm going to be teaching. Pray for me, honey. And he prays for me. That's a beautiful thing. Marriages need to be healed. Then he said to Adam, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. See, the ground now is going to fight against the man. Never meant to be that way. That's part of the curse. Thorns and thorns. Also, and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. We were never have, meant to have to work, um, strive, and sweat. And, you know, when the, when before they sinned, they could eat of every tree of the garden. Freely. Now they're going to have to work for it. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And here is, here is where it entered in, and it's when he said, And he said unto Adam, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, every man says, I'm never going to listen to another word she said. How many of us as women have said, my husband will just not listen to anything I have to say. In the past, that was true. I felt with me. But I thought, well, there he is right there. God said, because you listen to your wife. <laughs> and so, well, it just entered into every man. They don't even know it's there. But it's there. These are the things that came in in the Garden of Eden. And I'm going to stop right there. Um... Because there's a truckload of stuff right there. And I want to start with the curse of death. And we're going to deal with that. Okay, so here is a prayer of repentance <laughs> that I'm going to lead you through. And then we're going to write those things having to do with death. How about that? <clears throat> it says, um, for the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So you've been saved. You've already Your sin has been dealt with at the cross. And, and you know that your sin has been dealt with at the cross. But I want you to leave here knowing that death has been dealt with at the cross as well. And we're just going to get it out of us. So um, just repeat this after me. Father... From the time I was born until this day, death has been working in me unhindered. Today I confess that I have unknowingly cooperated with the spirit of death by agreeing with the world. And what I mean by that is you know, um, my father-in-law recently went into a nursing home, and the administrator, I was giving her some information, and she couldn't remember something, and she said, oh, I'm having one of those senior moments. Must be because I work here with all these Alzheimer's patients. And she said, don't you, and I said, she said, don't you hate it when those senior moments happen? I said, I don't have senior moments. Really, she said. I said, really? Now, I may forget something sometimes, but I don't claim it to be a senior moment. That is agreeing with the world that when you get old, you're going to be forgetful. I don't agree with that. And I told her, I said, um, she said, so you don't worry about getting Alzheimer's? I said, never. 
She said, really? I said, yeah. I said, the word? And she had all these little, you know, spiritual signs and things all over her office. And I said, the word says, I have the mind of Christ. Amen. And he doesn't have Alzheimer's. <laughs> and he doesn't have senior moments either. Now see, some people think I'm being arrogant when I say that. Nope, I just believe it. I believe it. So don't agree with the world. When you watch these programs about, uh, I mean, you know, and all these talk shows are full of this kind of stuff. Oh, well, when I reached the menopause, and, or, or you see these programs that are selling herbs, or, oh, and you can take this, put a stop to your hot flashes. Boy, they're making millions. You know how to put a stop to my hot flashes? I took dominion over my body. Hey, that is a curse on a woman. And Jesus Christ became the curse on my behalf. That curse is broken. Now, hot flashes, you got to stop. And, you know, when they first started, I may have a few, but not many. I stopped them. You know, when you get old, you're going to dry up. You're not going to enjoy your husband anymore. Bull. <laughs> I don't need any of that stuff they sell on TV. I'm sorry. That's a lie. Yeah, yeah. And we got it. Yeah. You know, I hurt my finger one day. I sprained it or something. And the lady I was with said, you're going to have arthritis in that finger. I said, I am not having arthritis in that finger. Yeah. Well, you just watch. You know, my father-in-law used to bring his candy at my husband's office. And one day, the bag, I was taking the candy out. And there was a tube of Preparation H in the bottom. And I said, did you mean to give this to me? Oh, no, I've got to have that. And he's coming to get it. He says, you're going to need it too one day. I said, I am not going to need it one day. My plumbing works perfectly. Don't agree with the world. Listen, I want to tell you something. I don't know if, um, I don't know if it had come to me when I gave the testimony here of um, the wreck that I had leaving the midwinter camp. No, it was Thanksgiving. December 1st, I was on the way home from here and had a, a one-car accident. Shouldn't have happened. It was just, thank God I prayed. The angels were with me. I was not injured. And you should see the pictures. I should have been injured. But the thing about it is, is much later, I remembered, because when I called my mama to tell her I had the wreck, first thing she said, she didn't even ask me, are you hurt? <laughs> no. Were you talking on that cell phone? I said, no, Mama. I don't even get a signal up there. Because how many times has she said, we've been in the car together, the final ring, I'll pick it up. What's the difference in picking up? Now, I keep my phone real. You know, I'm not digging in my purse to get it. It's right there. I don't even have to look. I can pick it up and answer it. Um, how is that any different than me looking at her and saying something to her in the car? You know? And she said, what did he say? And, and I thought, you know, to myself, did I, did I fall out of agreement with that thing that she said? Because it's so common in older people who have this habit of just living in worry and saying those kind of things. Did I say, well, I didn't receive that word. I break that word spoken curse in the name of Jesus. You better stop and do that. Because people are putting curses all the time. They don't know they're doing it. But it's a word spoken curse. Okay, okay. Um, so we're confessing we've unknowingly cooperated with the spirit of death by agreeing with the world, agreeing with doctors. You've got, you've got, you've got. And we go home and say, I have, I have. I know, I know, but you know what? Um, that that's a no. I know. I know. It's a process of faith, though. And because I used to go to the doctor's office, you know, every little hurt because I had the fear of death. <laughs> I had a big fear of death. So, <gasps> what is this? You know, it was like hypochondria. I had hypochondria. I was a hypochondriac. 
Okay, so uh, so one of my sons becomes a doctor, and I'm like, how does this happen? I mean, we live by faith. I never took him to the doctor. In the early years, I did. Then after God said, I can heal you if you get sick, and later he said, I can keep you. I said, I receive it. For me, my husband, my kids, we lost our insurance in 1988. Never needed it. Praise God. That's a testimony of the power of God. And and so he becomes a doctor, and I'm like, <sighs> and I thought for a minute, I said, but you know what, Lord? People who cannot have the faith in you for their infirmities need a doctor. And I tell people, if, if you are trying to have faith to believe and you're fearful, better go to the doctor. Because fear and faith don't coexist. The minute fear shows up, faith leaves. But guess what? The minute faith shows up, fear leaves. Okay. With negative words spoken to me by well-meaning friends. Even words that have come out of my own mouth. Cursing myself. Or cursing others. With death. With sicknesses. With diseases, with afflictions, with words of fear. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I repent today. I want to speak words of life. I ask you to help me to watch the words of my mouth. Help me to retrain my tongue. To speak only words of life and edification. You know, I tell that administrator, James, she said, you know, I always tell my husband he needs to be positive because death and life are in the tongue. I said, that's right. And James chapter 3, verse 5 or 6 somewhere, says that the tongue, a little member, uh, full of iniquity, set on fire by hell, and set it on fire the course of nature. Do you know how strong the course of nature is? That that you can have a dog in heat and dogs from six miles away <laughs> show up. That's the course of nature. Or you can just pour a concrete slab in a little tiny hairline crack and grass will grow up out of it. That's, that's how strong the force of nature is. And the words that we speak, you know... Uh, my brother and sister-in-law were going to come over the other day because I was at my mother's and I live a, a, a good distance away from them. So when I go in, we all get together. And uh, they were late. And I tried to call them. And neither one of them answered. And my mother said, well, I hope they didn't have a wreck on that bridge. I said, Mother, why is the first place you go to a place of crisis? You know? That's fear. That's a... a uh, a worry, that's worry. And worry is a sin. And you're also saying things that, I say this, let your words be something that you desire. Do you know really that's what prophecy is? Prophesying is speaking what you desire. And so if you speak things that are not I, I told my mom, I said, Mama, look, here, here's angels here, here's demons over here, and you say that, and it empowers the demons to go out and set it up to happen. You say the other thing, and the angels are dispatched to cause that to happen. Whose side are we on? Come on. Let's, let's be on God's side. And, and Mama, if you're watching, you know I'm just using these for example. I love you, Mom. <laughs> you know, I use her in examples a lot. I, I, I think sometimes she's sitting there thinking, oh. <laughs> No, I love my mom. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today I come in agreement. Today I come in agreement. With your word. With your word. And I now break. And renounce the curses of generationally inherited infirmities 
of my life. Now, I'll tell you why I'm saying that. Because, you know, my grandmother had it, and my mother had it, and I'm going to have it. And um, in my daddy's family, um, all of the men died in their 50s of heart attacks. And my I had two brothers. One died recently in September. But actually, he had dropped out of a heart attack 15 years ago. They did bypass, and he lived 15 more years. But then that bypass got blocked or whatever, so they had to do another bypass, and he just never really recovered from that. My other brother, who's two years younger than the elder brother, five years older than me, would always say, well, I don't expect to be here by the time I'm 60 anyway. Why? Because... His daddy's daddy, his grandfather, his daddy. My daddy had a heart attack in his 50s. And so um, he felt like he was going to have a heart attack and be dead. I was, you know, he would never even make it to 60. I said, you need to stop saying that. And then I just got up and said, let me break that off of you. That is a generously inherited curse, and it doesn't have to be yours. He belongs to Jesus Christ. Let's break that thing so we're going to break some generation in here in front of you. I bind the spirit of death. And I break its power off my life. In the name of Jesus. I bind and break the power of the spirit of infirmity. And command it to leave my body now. In the name of Jesus. Now, anybody here with an infirmity, I want you to do that right now. I want you to name that infirmity, break the power of it, and command it to get out of your life. Just do it right now. Just do it. Any infirmity that was generously inherited, command it to go in the name of Jesus. We have broken the power of it. And command it to go. Get out. In Jesus' name. I fall out of agreement. With Satan and the spirit of death. It is written in Romans 8 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. You know what that means? It doesn't apply to you anymore. From the law of sin and death. And again in Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for me. Now, see, when Jesus hung on the cross, he became the curse. He took upon himself all sin, all sickness, all disease, all afflictions. When he hung on the cross. He did that for us. He shed every drop of his blood. I got healed of allergies in the 1980s. I don't remember exactly when, but I can tell you right on the road where I received it. <laughs> I was going under an underpass, sick of the dog. Allergies, that was something my daddy had, my grandmother had. And twice a year, every spring and every fall, I would get really sick. <clears throat> it would start with a little drainage. Then my throat would get sore. Then these glands would swell up. And then my ears would get stopped up. And then I would lose my voice. And then several, a couple of weeks after that, it would all go down into my chest and I would end up with bronchitis. Twice I've had pneumonia. Um, and I was sick with this. I would have to go to the ear, nose, and throat doctor, get a shot, antibiotics, um, prescription cough medicine, all this stuff, only to go back a month later because it wasn't gone and get another shot and another round of antibiotics. And I had already done that. I was on my second round of everything, still sick as a dog, still miserable. And I had read in the Word that morning in my prayer time uh, the leper that went to Jesus and said, you know, if he wanted to, you could... You can make me clean. And Jesus said, I want to be done cleansed. And immediately he was cleansed. And here I am driving down the road, sick as a dog, and I'm thinking about those scriptures. I got a little put out. I said, Lord, I'm going to save you with a leper said. Except I was, I was talking out loud, but, Lord, I'm going to save you with a leper said. If you want to do you can show me in the church. 
pick up your stick. You know, I was just, you know, laying my heart out. And, and I heard him say, I've already done it. I'm waiting for you to receive it. And I was like, well, I don't know how. <laughs> and I heard, by faith. And I said, okay, I receive it by faith right now. In the name of Jesus. And the other thing you said after that, by faith, did I not say it is finished? Amen. Amen. Yeah, you said it was finished. Okay, I receive it right now by faith in Jesus' name. And I thank you. I thank you that I am healed in Jesus' name. Okay, I was on the way to this antique show, got to the mall, sick as a dog. But I was going to show the devil he wasn't going to keep me from going to the antique show. <laughs> well, I went, but I was sick as a dog. And when I got there, I went into this, I had seen a new something like Tylenol Sinus or something advertised on TV, so I went straight to the drugstore, bought some, took it, because I was miserable. Now, a lot of people would have said, you just negated your faith right there. Well, God didn't negate my faith. So, um, the rest of the day, I, I was just as sick as I was, but I woke up the next morning and every bit of it was gone. I mean, the marbles under here were gone. I had a voice. My fever was gone. The cough was gone. I was healed. So he, and he wants to heal you. He shed every drop of his blood. Not so we could be a little bit sick. Not so everything left except this one symptom. No. All. Okay. I now receive the spirit of life. I now, I now receive your spirit, your spirit. The, spirit of life. the spirit of life. I now receive, I now receive the, spirit of life the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I receive the spirit, receive the spirit of, the God. of the living God. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. For, your spirit of life. for your spirit of life. Thank you for abolishing death. In my, life. in my life. Thank you, Thank you. For, eternal for eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over the ruler spirit of death. I bind you now, bind you now. and break your power, and, break your power. And, I and I command you to get out of me. Now go, spirit of death, out. Get out in Jesus' name. Every spirit of death working in the women, go. In sickness, in oppression, depression, suicide, everything that wants to kill, everything that wants to make, cause death in their lives, I bind you and command you to go in Jesus' name. Get out. Get out now in Jesus' name. All spirits of death, go in Jesus' name. That slow, gradual diminishing of, I break your power and command you to go out and speak resurrection life into every cell in your body right now in Jesus' name. It is written that if the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body. You know what that means? It will give life. So I speak a reversal of damage to every cell in your body that any sickness has had, cancer, diabetes, uh, macular degeneration, oppression, depression, suicidal thoughts, death wishes, uh, resurrection life into the very DNA of your cells. Resurrection life. I command death to get out in the name of Jesus. And I say be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? Infirmities. Generationally inherited infirmities. I break, it, I break the generationally inherited curses of infirmities that came down through your mother's bloodline right now. All of those infirmities that were in your mother's bloodline, I break them right now and command them to go in the name of Jesus. I come against all the generationally inherited infirmities that came down through your father's bloodline. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out of their blood. Come out of their bones. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out of all of their organs. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing right now to every place that the infirmity took up in your body. I, I ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill up that place. There's a no vacancy sign for those infirmities to come back and take up household again. In Jesus' name. Leave now all spirits of death and destruction. You go in the name of Jesus. Death and destruction. Go. You are abolished by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Now everyone just take a deep breath and blow it out. Father, I thank you for giving us power over all the power of the enemy. I thank you for the ministry of casting out demons in the name of Jesus. I now take authority all familiar spirits of death. All familiar spirits of death. Infirmity, sickness, disease, weakness, fatigue, pain, all physical manifestations and symptoms. I give them leave now. I say go in the name of Jesus. All familiar spirits of infirmity, go in the name of Jesus. I, I, I give leave to all the familiar spirits that have followed you down your mother's bloodline right now. All the familiar spirits. You know, sometimes, um, like, um, I will have a, a posture or something. Like, I can remember when my mother would drive, she would hold her hand like this, the one she's not driving with. And sometimes I'll be driving and it's like, <laughs> you know, it's just, or I'll see a, a, an expression in the mirror and it is so my mother or so my grandmother or even sometimes my daddy. You know, I'll have these things. These are familiar spirits that cause you to behave and, and act just like a, another person in your family. Have you ever been told, you're just like your so-and-so. You're just like your mother. You're just like your aunt. You know, those are familiar spirits. So I just come in. Every familiar spirit that follows you down your mother's bloodline, go. I give you leave now. Go. In the name of Jesus. Lead in the name of Jesus. And I command all the familiar spirits that followed you down your father's bloodline. Go. I give you leave now. All those familiar spirits of your father. Go. In the name of Jesus. We'll keep the good stuff, but the bad stuff's got to go. In Jesus' name. Now I come against uh, diseases of the eyes. Diseases of the eyes. All cataracts. Glaucoma, macular degeneration, blindness, nearsightedness, and farsightedness. Go in Jesus', Jesus name. I speak the, against the lazy eye and blurred vision. Whatever your malady is in your eyes, I, I command all eye cancers to go in the name of Jesus. All afflictions of the eyes, you go. I come against diseases of the mind or the brain. Mental illness, you go. All bipolar, depression. Suicide, go, in the name of Jesus. Tourette's syndrome, autism, all forms of autism. I bind you and break your power and command you to go. All forms of uh, schizophrenia, double-mindedness, bipolar, go, in the name of Jesus. Alzheimer's, generationally inherited Alzheimer's, fear of Alzheimer's, you go, in the name of Jesus. Dementia, I break your power. Forgetfulness. In the name of Jesus. If you're, happy, if you're finding yourself being forgetful, hey, I activate the mind of Christ that is mine. I activate the mind of Christ. And I command forgetfulness to go. I speak to all tumors, tumors and cysts and things that grow in the brain. Go in the name of Jesus. Strokes and aneurysms. I bind you and break your power. Arrested development. Go in the name of Jesus. You know what, right now, just would you put your hand on your head, bind all arrested development in the name of Jesus Christ, even from the womb, in the name of Jesus. And I call for a supernatural maturity to take place in my brain to the chronological age that I am. Mind be healed in the name of Jesus. Now all arrested development's got to go. Get out. Go. Uh, act in childish and all of those things that cause us not to act like we're supposed to. I just command those things to go now in Jesus' name. And I break cancer, cancer off of your mind in the name of Jesus, off of your body, out of every organ in Jesus' name. Now, diseases of the blood, all leukemia, all blood cancers, every malady of the blood, diabetes, Hepatitis, all forms of hepatitis, you go. Sickle cell anemia, circulatory problems, clots, go in the name of Jesus Christ. All generational diseases of the blood, I break your power and command you to go in Jesus' name. All bone diseases, all bone diseases, I'm speaking to bone diseases. All osteoporosis, spinal defects, degenerative discs, scoliosis. Go in the name of Jesus. All bone diseases, bone cancers, 
feet problems, joint problems, name whatever your bone thing is, write down, name it and command it to go in the name of Jesus. All arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, regular arthritis, I don't know what all those, bursitis, all those arthritis things go in the name of Jesus. Um, those would be uh, inflammatory diseases go in the name of Jesus. All inflammatory diseases of the bones, of the joint go in the name of Jesus. All bone spurs and bone abnormalities go in the name of Jesus. Now, all muscular diseases, muscular sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, weak muscles, muscle spasms, I break your power in Jesus' name, cramps, muscle cramps, Lou Gehrig's disease, all hernias and all muscular diseases, I command you to go, I break your power and command you to leave God's people now. All digestive problems, all acid reflux, I bind you and break your power and command you to go. Indigestion, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, I break your power, diseases of the mouth, Esophagus problems, you go in the name of Jesus. All stomach problems, you go in the name of Jesus. Hemorrhoids, I speak to hemorrhoids, you go in the name of Jesus. All cancer in the digestive tract, you go. I speak healing from the, from the mouth to the outlet in Jesus' name. I speak healing to all digestive, your digestive tract. All colon problems, I bind you and break your power. Intestinal problems and digestive cancers, all cancers of the uh, digestive system, I break your power and command you to get out in Jesus' name. Now, all organ diseases, diseases of the heart, I break your power and command you to go. Diseases of the liver, go in Jesus' name. Of the kidneys, go in the name of Jesus. Lung diseases, go in the name of Jesus. COPD, go. I break your power. Asthma, I break your power and command you to go in Jesus' name. All diseases of the lungs. Skin diseases, skin disorders, you go now in the name of Jesus. Dry skin, um, psoriasis, seborrhea, all those skin diseases, go. Warts and uh, growths on the skin, go in Jesus' name. Skin cancer, go in the name of Jesus. A melanoma, go in the name of Jesus. I break, it, break uh, the power of melanoma, go in the name of Jesus. Now, all female organ problems, problems of the female organs, generationally inherited problems in the female organs, go in the name of Jesus. All gallbladder problems. I speak to gallbladders right now. I come in infirmities of the gallbladder. You go in Jesus' name. The pancreas. I speak healing to your pancreas. All problems in the pancreas, you go. Organ cancers. All cancers having to do with organs. I bind you and break your power and command you to get out. You spirit of death, you death and destructive spirits, you go in Jesus' name. Now, all diseases of the mouth. Rotting teeth, gum diseases, mouth cancers, throat cancers, all diseases of the mouth. Uh, your saliva glands, your tongue, uh, the roof of your mouth, go in the name of Jesus. All mouth diseases, you go in Jesus' name. I speak death. I, I speak death to the, I break the curse of death off of your mouth. In decay, gum diseases and teeth decay, all of those things that have to do with death in the mouth, even speaking death by the mouth in Jesus' name. Psalm 91 3 says, We have been delivered from noisome pestilence. Now, I did a word study on that, and it means any ill smelling, infectious, contagious disease or virus. That about covers it all. Lord, we thank you that you did that for us. So I speak death to any and all viral or bacterial infections in your body right now in the name of Jesus. Go. Viral infections and bacterial infections. I speak death to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I lose the blessings of God. I lose healing upon your women, Lord. I say be healed in the name of Jesus. 
I lose life and wholeness. I say, live, be made whole in the name of Jesus. I lose peace in the name of Jesus. I lose strength and vitality of quickening in your bodies right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak a reversal of damage to every effect that death has had in your life and on your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak resurrection life to every dead and dying cell in your body. Amen? And have a blessed sleep, and we'll see you at 6 o'clock in the morning. Amen. Good night. God bless you. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.